Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at applying relationships of similar figures. We're going to answer the question, what is the relationship between sides of similar figures and how can this relationship be used to find a missing side links? So similar figures, this sign means similar. Um, they are the same shape, but not the same size. However, their corresponding side lengths are proportional. That means that there is a constant ratio called the scale factor between their corresponding sides. So first thing we need to do is identify the corresponding sides and then we'll talk more about that constant ratio and then being proportional. So let's do that here. We're gonna identify the three corresponding sides in these triangles. So what I like to do is just pick one side on the first triangle, so AB. And on AB, I'm actually going to do it in highlighter. Okay, and on A, B, I go from the two angle markings to the three angle markings. So I need to find the same side on this triangle, which would be side D, E. I know that those sides are corresponding because they both go from the two angle measure markings to the three angle measure markings. So those sides are corresponding. So it says identify three corresponding sides. We know that A, B corresponds with D, E. Okay, let's do another set. Next one I'm gonna do is A, C. So A, C has two angle measure markings and then it goes to the one right there. So D to F corresponds with A, C. So AC corresponds with DF. Okay, and then the last one, B to C on the first triangle corresponds with E to F because we go from congruent angle to congruent angle. So BC and EF. Okay, now we've identified some corresponding side lengths um, and I have them highlighted in the same color. We are going to write an example proportion between the corresponding sides. So if I take this corresponding side and divide it by this one, then I will get the same ratio when I do that with another set of corresponding sides. So for example, I know that side A, B, is corresponding with side D, E. Those were both my pink sides. Whenever I divide those sides, I will get the same ratio if I do that with another set of corresponding sides. So if I did it with A to C, for example, and D to F. So that's um, the special relationship between the sides of similar figures. They are not the same side length, but we have this constant ratio here. So for example, if this triangle was two thirds the size of this one, both these numbers right here would be two thirds. Okay, we're gonna look more at that constant ratio called the scale factor in our next unit. For today, what we're gonna do is we are just going to set up proportions to find the missing side. So I'm gonna set up a proportion like this one and then I will cross multiply and I'll be able to find the missing side length. So, First thing I wanna do is identify corresponding sides. I know that six is corresponding with four. And then I know that nine corresponds with X because they go from congruent, the same two congruent angles for the pink sides. And then again, the same two congruent angles for the blue sides. So now I can set up my proportion and you have to make sure you're consistent about it. So, I'm going to do this triangle on top of my proportion this time. So my first ratio would be four over six because those are corresponding sides. And then 
the second one, x and 9 are corresponding, and x has to come first since 4 came first last time, equals x over 9. Okay, now I can cross multiply. 4 times 9 is 36, and 6 times x is 6x. And to find x, I divide by 6, and 36 divided by 6 is 6. So I found x, and it is 6. Okay, let's do the same thing on number 2. I need to identify my corresponding sides. So notice we have this larger outside triangle, and then we have this smaller inside triangle. So right away, I can tell that 14 and x, those sides are corresponding. Okay, now in the smaller triangle, 6 is that bottom side length. In the larger triangle, it's all of this right here. So it's whatever 10 plus 6 is. And 10 plus 6 is 16. So that means that 6 and 16 are the corresponding sides. Okay, now let's set up our proportion. I'm going to do x over 14 for the first ratio. And then the second ratio has to come from the smaller triangle first, since that's what I did last time. So that side length was 6. And then the matching one was 16. Okay, now I'm going to cross multiply. And 14 times 6 is 84. And 16 times x is 16x. I'm going to divide by 16. And 84 divided by 16 is 5.25. So that missing side length x is 5.25. Okay, let's look at number three. So number three, I have several sets of corresponding sides. I just need two sets to be able to set up my proportion and find x. Let's identify the corresponding sides with x first. I go from that one angle measure marking to two, and that corresponding side over here would be 10. Okay, I just need one more set of corresponding sides. Since I get to choose, I'm going to choose the side that doesn't have decimals, just to make it easier on myself. So 6 goes from the right angle to the 3 angle measure marking, so does 8 over here. Okay, now I can set up my proportion. It's going to be 6 over 8 for the first ratio, and then it would be x over 10 for the second one. Okay, now I'm going to cross multiply. 6 times 10 is 60, and 8 times x is 8x. And then I'm going to divide by 8, and 60 divided by 8 is 7.5. So that missing side length is 7.5. Okay, next one. My figures are not facing the same way, but I still know that they are similar because we have congruent angles. So even though they're facing different ways, they are similar because we have congruent angles. I just need to be careful when identifying corresponding sides. So this one says find AB. So I'm going to highlight AB first. That's what I need to find. Let me identify the corresponding side. Well, obviously it's the smaller of the two side lengths we have available here. So it's going to correspond with 9. Okay, and then the other set of corresponding sides is 18 and 12. So they didn't put an X on it this time, but this is what I'm finding, A, B. I'm going to put an X there so I know that. Now I can set up my proportion. I'm going to do 9 over X for the first ratio. And then I'll do 18 over 12 for the second one. There's lots of different ways to set up this proportion. You just have to make sure that you're consistent and start with the first shape or the same shape on each ratio. Okay, so 9 times 12 is 108. And then 18 times x is 18x. And then I'm going to divide by 18. And 108 divided by 18 is 6. So that missing side length was 6. 
Okay, let's look at this last one, number five. It says figure one and figure two, which are right here, are similar figures, which proportion must be true? So basically they are asking, can you set up a proportion correctly? So this one we just have to go through and do process of elimination. Um, before I do that, I'm going to identify the corresponding sides. That will help me easily see if the proportion is set up correctly. So first side on this one is A, B. I go from the right angle to the one angle marking and that corresponds with this side over here. We go from congruent angle to congruent angle. So A, B, and E, F are corresponding. Then B, C goes from one angle measure to two, which is corresponding with F, G over here. And then the next set of corresponding angles is D to C and G, H. And then our last one would be H to E and A to D. Okay, so now I've identified my corresponding angle measures. It'll be easier to see which proportion works and which one does not. So on this one, A, B to E, F, okay, those are corresponding because they were both pink. But on the next one, I go from G, H, which was green, to C, D, which was green. Um, but there's a problem here. So it has corresponding sides, but look, this is figure one right here, and this is figure two. This one starts with figure one on the top, this one starts with figure two on the top, so that's not keeping it consistent. So this one is not correct. We have to keep it consistent. Even though it had corresponding sides, it flipped it in this fraction over here, so that proportion is not correct. Okay, let's look at the next one. I go from A, B to E, F again, so that corresponds. Go from figure one to figure two. Okay, then I go from C, D, which is the green side, to F, G, which is the blue side. So that one does not work because the second ratio is not using corresponding sides. All right, let's look at C. I go from A, B to F, G and FG was this blue side over here. Let's see if they do the same thing on the other side. On the other ratio, they go from CD, which is the green side, to GH, which is also the green side. So they kept it consistent on the right fraction, but not on the left one, so that one's not gonna work. Okay, let's look at this last one. We go from A, B to E, F, which are both the corresponding sides, and we start with figure one. And then on the right side of the fraction, I go from C, D to G, H. So those are corresponding, and C, D, I started with figure one again. So we used all corresponding sides, and we kept the ratio, what was in the numerator and the denominator consistent, so the answer here is D.